This is actually one of my favorite experiments. A frappuccino that turns from purple to pink as you drink it. Noodles that transform from a bright, vibrant blue to pink as you add a little lemon juice. And cabbage that, as you pickle it, turns from this deep purple into this bright pink. What do all three of these color transformations have in common? They all exploit the natural pigments found in red cabbage. Yes, the humble, underrated red cabbage. And let me show you exactly how, because this is the hidden science behind color changing foods. natural colorants in red cabbage are super undervalued. I mean, I had so much fun playing with red cabbage for this video, and there's a lot of cool color chemistry going on. When it comes to a food's color, there's certain molecules that are responsible for these hues. So for example, if we take red cabbage, that bright purple color is due to molecules called anthocyanins. Anthocyanins are usually responsible for colors like blue, red, and purple when it comes to our fruits and vegetables. You, these are in berries, grapes, currants, even some uh, citrus fruits have high amounts of anthocyanins. But back to red cabbage, because just in red cabbage, there are actually five different forms of anthocyanins, all in equilibrium with one another. And it's actually these different forms that lead us to the magic of color changing foods. But first, we need to get those anthocyanins out of the red cabbage. And to do this, we're going to do something called a solvent extraction. And I know that sounds super fancy, but all I'm gonna do here is pour boiling water over some red cabbage that I've cut up into tinier pieces. Since anthocyanins are water soluble, you can see they super quickly leach out of that cabbage into our hot water. As you can see, solvent extraction isn't anything very complicated. In fact, you actually do this whenever you make coffee or tea. So basically you're a scientist and you didn't even know it. And let me show you some of this color changing power I've been talking about. So I just took three different glasses of this blue liquid and let me start adding lemon juice, which is an acid to one of these. And you can see immediately, if we add just a little bit of lemon juice, one teaspoon, we get kind of a purpley color. But if I add about four teaspoons or even more lemon juice, we get this like super bright, vibrant pink. In fact, anthocyanins can make even more colors like green and yellow depending on certain conditions. This is the calcone and carbonyl pseudo base forms, which are only formed at very high pHs or in very basic conditions. But in foods, we rarely have foods that are basic. Most often foods are either around neutral pH or slightly acidic. And I absolutely love all the bright colors anthocyanins can make, but this is the exact reason that most product developers, food scientists who make products to go in the grocery store, absolutely hate working with anthocyanins. It's a huge headache because these molecules are constantly changing colors, changing their hue, and it's very hard to control. That's because anthocyanins are incredibly unstable. But for the specific case of color changing foods, we can actually use this to our benefit. When I say anthocyanins are unstable, I don't mean like they spontaneously burst into tears like one of your very sensitive friends. And we love our sensitive friends, but we all have them. I mean that they're chemically unstable, that it, the molecules very easily have little tweaks or changes to their chemical structure. And this could be something as small as adding or subtracting a hydrogen. And it's not that just anthocyanins are unstable to acid like that lemon juice. They actually are very sensitive to most things in life. And this includes light, oxygen, temperature, and certain enzymes. It's just a mess of a molecule. It's just chemically super unstable. But for us, that's actually the fun part, the good part, because this one natural pigment can achieve a whole slew of colors from red, purple, blue, clear, yellow, green. Like, that's crazy. And each of these color changes is actually also reversible. Looking at our cabbage extract, you can see it's sort of this bluish color right now, which gives us a hint that most of the anthocyanins right now are in the anionic quinonal base form, the blue form. 
And if we look at the arrows from blue to the purple form, we can see that if we add H+, which H+, is just shorthand for adding acid, we can make the blue form go purple. So when the liquid looks more of this purple color, a deep purple, we know that anthocyanins are in the quinonal base form. Now, if we want to go even further, if we look at the arrows to the red form, the flavion cation, again, we just need to add H+, add more acid or lemon juice to convert the purple form to a pinkish red form or that cation. And what's really cool is remember, each of these is reversible. So if you add a base, something like baking soda, you can actually change the colors back to purple and even further to blue. Although adding that much baking soda might not be super tasty. So using some of this color chemistry and these color changing pigments, I want to show you how to make different color changing foods. And my absolute favorite is called unicorn noodles and if you have a kid in your life or like me are a kid at heart these are so fun and a great way to show people that there's science behind the food we eat to make this all you have to do is take that blue liquid extract we got from the cabbage and take some light colored noodles sort of a white or clear colored noodles i used uh glass noodles here made from mung beans and then just boil those in that blue liquid for a couple minutes or whatever directions the package give is fine. Once the noodles are cooked, you can see they absorb those anthocyanins. They're this like super cool bright blue color, but this is not even the best part because we know if those anthocyanins are looking blue to us, that means they're in the form of the anionic quinodal base. So we're at pH of about six or seven, which means if we sprinkle on a little lemon juice, we can force the anthocyanins into a different form, the quinodal base form, which looks purple to us. And if we keep adding some more of that lemon juice, keep lowering the pH by adding the acid, we see some of the anthocyanins turn into the flavillium cation or that pinkish red color. So these unicorn noodles, which before this video probably seemed to do this magical color transformation, now you know that it's actually due to color chemistry. You're changing the chemical structure of those anthocyanins. Starbucks used a similar trick a couple years ago when they launched their unicorn frappuccino, if you remember these. I really, really did want to try one of these because I like very bright things, but I thought uh, there's probably too much sugar. I might puke, like I'm too old for that stuff. I just need like regular coffee with a little splash of cream. This frappuccino was known for starting as a purple color when you first get it, but by the end of the drink, it had turned to this pinkish color. Any idea what's happening here? Well, we already know if Starbucks used anthocyanins for this color, if it's purple, this means it's in the quinodal base form. To make it more of a pinkish color, by the end of the drink, we need to convert the quinodal base form to the flavillium cation, that reddish pink one. And remember, all we have to do to do this is somehow add acid to lower the pH of the drink and therefore change in the color. Starbucks does give us a little hint by reading the drink description where it says one of the ingredients is this sour blue drizzle in the drink and the drink is also topped with a sour blue powder. Now, when a food tastes sour, I want you to immediately think acids because it's these little molecules that are acids that interact with our taste buds to trigger our brain to think, ooh, that's a sour food. So Starbucks actually used the same anthocyanin trick I just explained using unicorn noodles because as you're drinking your frappuccino and everything starts sort of melting and mixing together, including that blue powder and the blue drizzle, they actually lowered the pH of the overall drink. That acid that was once limited to those blue components mixes with the rest of the drink and you see a color change from purple to reddish pink as the pH is being lowered by that acidic blue component, right? It's just a simple switch again from the anthocyanins being in that purple quinodal base form. Once the acid is added, they are converted to the flavillium cation form or the reddish pink form. The same exact color changing trick. And it doesn't always have to be citric acid. In fact, if you've ever pickled red cabbage to make something like kimchi, you've probably noticed in the end, the kimchi, that red cabbage is really bright pink. That's because when you pickle something, you add vinegar, which is mostly acetic acid. 
So a different acid, but the same effect. If you enjoyed this video, next I would watch my video on how Jet Pop invented color-changing marshmallows.